as a general rule. That's fair. Maybe I gave it back to you? And then maybe I sold it? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, hello. What's up, guys? We're, we're back. We're doing uh, podcasty things. The oh. last one you saw was our celebratory, hey, look where we've come from. Oh, our one year. Our one year. Yeah. And then I got a, an email from Google from YouTube saying, hey, it's been a year. So we actually timed it out really well. Oh, nice. Well. Sick. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. So Pat gave me his fidget spinner. So hopefully I will be fidgeting less. He like fidgets a lot. Right. That's for you, mom. That was the one comment you had. Oh, that's so. right. Hey, Pat's yeah. mom. <laughs> hey, Tyler. Are you going to click off now? Okay. See you later, See buddy. See ya. So, uh, yeah, we have a couple things to talk about. I'm very excited. Um, Khabib Connor. <sighs> Khabib Connor. I'm just going to jump right into UFC it. UFC 229. That's what so, uh, yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah. You wanna, do you want to go first? We can. Do you want to talk about Khabib Connor first? Do you want to talk about Tony... Uh, Anthony Showtime Pettis first. Well, first, I want to talk about how I called every single fight correctly, and Uh I even called who got fight of the night. So uh, I'm going to buy lotto tickets this week, and pretty pretty soon I should be a millionaire. So this is going to like pick up real fast. This is going to blow up. But yeah, I I think let's just go right into Connor Khabib. Connor Khabib. Uh, You're going to know a lot more on it. I just thought the after... Like uh, Khabib jumping over the cage and then Connor getting sucker punched. That was, was crazy. A fucking shit show. That was crazy. Yeah. Well, so it's super personal for them. Obviously, after the events that happened in New York, where Connor threw a fucking hand truck at a bus, <laughs> yeah. um, injuring Michael Chiesa and like causing major shit to happen on that card. Yeah. Um, this was personal for both of them, I think. And Connor. The, the one thing I will say about Connor is as cocky and as arrogant as he is, in defeat, he's always very humble. He is mm-hmm. always very, like, when he lost to Diaz, he was very humble and said Diaz beat him. Uh, when he lost to Mayweather, he said Mayweather was just that much better than him. Like, in the times that I've seen Connor McGregor lose in combat sports, he'll talk a big game beforehand, but after it's over, he will, he will very humbly admit defeat and say he's going to come back better and stronger and he's going to work on his game and this was his fourth loss yes i think on his professional record it was his third or fourth i can't remember but yeah third sounds right sounds right because i know i don't know how many losses he has in the ufc i think he only's got two i think this was his second but his professional record well your professional record it carries over the ufc is a separate thing like what did they show on the on the card that's a prof- your professional record oh okay then yeah like khabib doesn't have 27 fights in the ufc but he's got he's 27 and 0 mm-hmm. so in his professional career he's 27 you could be a professional right now you literally go hi i'm professional and hey, then i'm a pro fighter yeah well that doesn't really work that way uh but. yeah but i'm undefeated <laughs> so how many times have you been defeated pat more than zero yeah so i guess i'm a better fighter than you we can test this theory if you'd like. That's okay. <laughs> we don't have to do that. Let's just take my word for it. Okay. But go, um, go back to what you were saying. Yeah, I mean, Khabib, um, I mean, Rogan said it on the on the 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 cast a few times. He was a mauler. Like I Connor prepared, prepared for the wrestling, and I think it was really obvious that he did. Um, because he was doing the right stuff to be able to try and stifle takedowns and whatnot, but mm. Khabib's just he's on another level with his wrestling oh that yeah his he smothers people and Connor was just as soon as he got his back last night I was like oh that's done yep that nah, it's done didn't he get it twice uh, I think he almost had it at one point in the in the second round mm-hmm. and Connor got out of it he like used the cage to kind of like brush him off or something I yeah. know he almost had it another time and I was like oh no and Connor like bucked or or like like used a jolt of energy to try mm-hmm. and get out but well he um, was grabbing onto the cage with his feet too yeah which is that's a no-no uh not allowed through an illegal knee as well mm-hmm. you're not allowed to do that uh when you're both down you're not allowed to hit someone with a knee in the head when you're yeah. on the bottom or on the ground at all um but yeah i think the the biggest shock for me too was like could be as soon as he threw his mouthpiece at the guy mm-hmm. i was like oh no this shit's about to get wild yeah and then he hopped the cage and shit hit the fan. Yep. I literally sat up and I was like, what is happening? Did you see the the video that Cameron Hayes posted? Mm-mm. Uh, you know who Cameron Hayes is? He's on Joe Rogan a lot. Sound, the name sounds familiar. Okay. It, he was he was close to the octagon, so he had a, he had the opposite angle. Do you know how the the broadcast was from 
the opposite side of the octagon. Yeah. Cameron Haynes was right where it happened. I think it was Cameron Haynes. Oh. But any so he you see him jump up and swing right at who who did he go after? It, well, he went after Connor's jujitsu coach, Darren That's right. something. I can't he was, remember his last name. He was from Dagestan too, wasn't he? Connor? The coach? No, no, the no, coach? no. I don't I don't know. I, I don't want to comment on that because I'm not sure one way or another. Okay. But I know that there's just a lot of animosity. And then to top that all off, could be jumping out of the cage, which is something that's only been done. I've seen someone jump out of the cage one other time, and it was Jose Aldo when he won or retained the belt in Brazil. Mm-hmm. He jumped into the crowd to celebrate with the fans. Yeah, I have a like, reason. Swarmed him, and like it was a beautiful moment for Brazilian fans. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like to see him jump out and go into. The audience yeah. was, and I, I think I said it to you earlier today, I think he could be stripped for that. I think they could take his belt from him for that. Yeah, because they, they kind of have to send a message because they this looks so bad for the UFC. So bad. They, they've spent 25 years trying to convince the public that they're a sport, not just like gladiator shit. Yeah. And this is gladiator shit. It's not even gladiator. Sh- it's just dumb shit. It, it's, you know, everyone's, yeah. everyone, you know, has that general understanding of like, oh, you're a fighter, so you must be dumb. Like, you must not be able to do anything else. Mm-hmm. Like, and all, all Khabib did was show the entire world because everyone in the world, this was an international fight card. Everyone was watching, and all he did was was validate that those people's viewpoint. Yeah, and that sucks. Mm-hmm. That sucks because you know if Connor won, he would have been uppity about it. He would have he would have said some shit, but that shit never would have went down. He would have stayed in the cage, and I oh Connor would have yeah stayed Connor would have yeah. stayed in the cage, and Connor got sucker punched and did nothing. I yeah. think that Connor doesn't get enough en- enough praise for this guy jumped in the cage after Khabib is out of the cage mauling people Mm -hmm. in the audience and Connor got sucker punched and did nothing yeah I heard there were more than just one guy on him too I I only saw the one I saw the dude hop over and it was a red hoodie and I was like what the fuck is like I was like I literally made the comment is it just okay to jump in the cage now and then he wound up and cracked Connor and Connor turned around to like do something and he didn't he backed right up because Connor won't be suspended now. Connor did nothing wrong. Even if he did do something, I think he'd get away with it or he would be allowed to because he wasn't the instigator. I think it came out too today that he's not going to press charges. Really? Which I think I mean, is, that's probably is really smart. very upstanding of him though. Yeah. I think he could drag that fucker through court and take everything he has. He could. He, I think he knows that a lot of this, if not all of it, stems from him throwing that the, that dolly. the hand cart? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but also, wh- so what inspired that? That was one of Khabib's guys threatening... Khabib? No, it was Khabib. Oh, it was Khabib uh, himself. Threatened one of Connor's teammates. And like, I, I forget what the what the actual incident was, but Khabib did something, like choked a teammate, smacked a teammate in the face or something. Mm-hmm. And then like, it was like, kind of like last night where all, both parties like kind of swarmed or whatever. Yeah. And Khabib kind of faded into the mist. He like faded back because... He's an undefeated fight. Like, why would you put your your shit on the line for that? For that, but uh, Connor was pissed, and that was something that kind of st- stemmed Connor then wanting to fight Khabib and coming out of semi retirement, mm-hmm. you know, in the UFC. And I think Connor looked good. I don't think he looked bad. I mean, he, he his wrestling. He looked like he knew what he was getting into. He looked like he knew Khabib was going to try and wrestle him to the ground, and it's just. If I was Connor, and it's easy to say from this side of things, you know I'm a big fan of, of taking away a fighter's front leg. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things to say during a fight <laughs> is why are you not taking away the front leg? But with something like Khabib, with someone like Khabib and Connor's length, I think he should have been attacking that front leg the whole time. And a lot of people will say if we have people that are you know knowledgeable in the fight game that watch this and i'm not saying that i'm knowledgeable i have some understanding um a lot of people will say well if he leg kicks khabib that just makes his takedown easier easier for khabib to to take, take him, him down, down because he's, he's on one leg yeah. he's on one leg but it didn't seem to matter when he had two so yeah i but on that point i, I think he was aware of Khabib trying to take him down so staying on two was his way to kind of because he stuffed a few defenses he, he stuffed uh, I think it was three I think he stuffed three but two of them were in the same round ra- I think three of them might have actually been in the same round yeah. he stuffed one at the beginning of one round in the middle and then I think 
the maybe it was maybe it was only two in one round, but he stuffed a couple in one round. So ultimately, he might have stuffed one during the fight in its entirety. Mm-hmm. I'd at least try and attack the front leg, get him to be a little more leery about standing and throwing, and also you take away that front leg that that pop that immediate shot. Yeah. That that thrust goes away pretty quickly. So and Khabib's beefy. He's a thick dude. So mm-hmm. like any chance you can get to slow him down, I think you should have taken it. You know, I think Connor needed to stay outside a little more. And he was looking for the shot. He was looking for Khabib to shoot, and I think that was his mistake. Uh Connor is a counter strike guy, and that's the kind of fighter that he is, and then it works for him. It does. He's got mm-hmm. great knockout power in that left hook, but I just think I think he played a little too lax and he played into Khabib's game. Yeah. I think, you know, if he pushed the pace a little bit and got in Khabib's face and like made sure he didn't have a lot of space, that shot gets harder. Yeah. So uh, one thing that I remember hearing is that Khabib normally has struggles to make weight, but he walked in like ready to go. Just yeah. About Did, what about Connor? Uh, Connor's not hasn't missed weight. He's ever missed weight? Mm-mm. Not, did, but not did, does he walk around? Clo- what was the fight at? Was it 45? It was 55. 55? Um, I think Connor walks around close to 170, 180. Oh, so he's already a lot lighter than than uh, Khabib. Yeah, Khabib, Khabib walks around like near Khabib's 200. Khabib's beefy. Yeah. I think Connor walks around like 170, 180. I could be wrong, but Connor's moved up in weight. He's moved down in weight. You know, Connor fought at 145. He fought at 155. He's fought at 170. Mm-hmm. So he can go anywhere and that that's what makes it exciting for me as a fight fan connor now said he would give diaz another another fight so that's a trilogy waiting to happen Mm -hmm. connor has one diaz has one uh gsp's out in the ether waiting he's waiting for a fight gsp fighting gsp mcgregor would be a would sell a shit ton of pay-per-views but i feel like people wouldn't like it because gsp is the same kind of dominant wrestler that i think khabib is Mm -hmm. gsp has maybe the best double leg tank down the in mma like was offered a spot on the canadian olympic team as a wrestler and it did not grow up wrestling yeah no he started late he started real late He's done. He did like karate when he was a kid, and then mm-hmm. got into mixed martial arts as he got older. And GSP is a tactician. He'll take Connor apart, and I don't think it would be pretty. No. Like, I don't know. That's just my my thought process. But I don't think he's even the one who should who would get the fight. I mean, depending on what happens with Khabib and whether he gets stripped or or whatever it is, Shab <laughs> was saying that that is what Khabib wants. If if Khabib he wanted to come in, defeat the poster boy, and then dip. But if they offer him a super fight with GSP, he'll come back. It changes a lot now because of what happened. Yeah, that's the thing. Is I would love to see that fight. Can you market Khabib to... Connor is marketable to everyone because mm-hmm. people either love him or they want to see him get punched in the face. Yeah. Khabib now... The people that did like him probably lost some respect for him because of what happened. Yeah. And the people that didn't like him definitely don't fucking like him now. Mm-hmm. So... Is he now a marketable asset? I say no. Hmm. I think he's, yeah, he's just a hard, hard thing to, he's a really good foil to someone like Connor, Mm -hmm. who's loud and brash and and can be, and I'm assuming that's what he always does, is just sit there stoic. Uh, He's never really been on a stage like that before. Like, he's never really had someone like Connor. And GSP is not that guy. GSP is not going to start. He's very reserved. He's very reserved. He's very respectful. I, that would be a great fight for people that like watching MMA because it would be a lot of wrestling, a lot of grappling. Mm-hmm. But for the the fan that wants to watch people like the people that want to watch the Anthony Showtime Pettis Tony Ferguson fight, yeah. they would not like a GSP Khabib fight because mm-hmm. it would be a lot of takedowns, a lot of submission attempts, stuff that that most fans don't really give a fuck about. Yeah, because it's not bloody. No, it's not bloody, and and it's hard to be able to dictate progress in stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. it's hard to be like, well, this guy's in guard, but this guy's attacking from the bottom, and nobody's cut, so who's winning? Yeah. And, like, it's, yeah, it's a whole thing. GSP's got a really good jab, too, so I think he could Khabib, keep Khabib to the outside, but I don't know, man. Khabib, his wrestling's on another level. Yeah, and we'll see if, if that even happens. I mean, I, I'm very interested to see what happens to Khabib. He's getting suspended for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be at least like a six-month suspension. Did they do a post-fight conference? I think so, but it, I don't... Dana was pissed. Yeah, because I waited around, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, it's like 145. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave. <laughs> I have an hour go. drive. <laughs> I got to go. Yeah, so I, I didn't see anything, and I didn't look it up today. I believe they did. 
Um, and uh, one of the quotes I read from Dan, I only read it briefly. I woke up this morning and I was preoccupied, mm-hmm. but I woke up this morning and um, like did a real quick search and, and Dana said he was disgusted. He was like, I've never seen anything like that before. And he's like, that was, that was a terrible display. Yeah. And again, it's in front of the world. Like the world tuned in to watch this fight Mm -hmm. and I can't wait to see the pay-per-view buys for it. I think it's going to be huge. Yeah. But they were playing up the world stuff too. Yeah. Like they had in the graphics, they had their eyes in their eye, which have they done that before? I I know both of the, both fighters have very like, um, what's the word? National pride. Yeah. Like the, the, but the people who live there also are just like in love with them. Oh Yeah. Yeah, they have a good following in their home base or whatever. Yeah, a yeah. Pa- passionate following. That's yeah. what I was trying to say. Um, but no, you're right. The whole world was watching. I'm gonna it made st- UFC look amateurish. I want to start uh, start the phrase, you gonna, you going to pull a Khabib, bro? <laughs> I just want to start, you going to pull a Khabib. I just want that to be a thing, like in the vernacular of the world. Yeah. It's like, you upset? You're going to pull a Khabib? You're going you're gonna to throw shit at me and run? Even you're though gonna, you already won? Even though you already won, bro. You're going to pull a Khabib? You're going to be upset? It's called being a sore winner. That, oh, man. That's just so upsetting to me. It's just so upsetting because, you know, even, and I know you didn't get to, to listen as much because you were in a, like a group gathering mm-hmm. with a bunch of people, but Joe was saying how, like, Joe was adamantly upset. Yeah. Like he kept yeah. making comment. I'm I'm excited to see the next time he talks or when he finally talks about it, whether it's Monday on the on the podcast or whatever. But he was like, it's disgusting. He was like super upset. He was like, that was a dominant victory. Khabib showed the world that he's the best at 155 pounds. Mm-hmm. And then he did this. Yeah. Then he tarnished it. He tarnished it. And that's that's what that fight will be remembered for. Not the the molly whopping Connor got. Mm-hmm. Not that Khabib knocked him down with a right hand. Not that, you know, he sat on top of him and punched him in the face for three and a half rounds. Yeah. It will be that he jumped out of the ring and went after someone in the crowd. Yeah. And that's that sucks. Yeah. Speaking of of giving him a pounding, what I think it was eight. Maybe ten strikes just straight to Connor, and Herb didn't call it. Yeah, I was which very I support, surprised. Which I, I mean, his his hands were still up; he was still defending. Yeah, and I don't to, think and Connor to, went out at all. No, and to call the call a championship fight, especially with someone as fiery as Connor, that would not have gone well. No, but I was, I was like, I was impressed. I was shocked. Yeah, that's. I like Herb Dean a lot. I think you, in in the fights that we've watched together since we lived together, I think you always like you recognize like. When I know who the ref is, and I'm like, "Ooh, it's Herb. Ooh, mm-hmm. it's Dan Mergliata. Oh, it's like there's different there's different refs that I'm like, okay, cool. I like this guy. Yeah, because there's guys that ref, and I'm like, you suck. I'm concerned. Who are some of the shitty ones? Um, one of them is Steve Mazagati. Okay, I hate him. He's he calls fights real early, mm-hmm. and uh, I can't think of. Mario Yamasaki is like hit and miss. He has good ones and also bad ones. Okay. But those are two of the ones that I think of that I'm like, eh. But Herb I like a lot. Herb I like a lot. And uh, oh, one of the other things too. Khabib left that choke in. I don't know if you saw. Oh, what? After mm-hmm. he tapped? After he tapped, he left oh, it in. Oh, yeah. He, also, he only had his chin too, right? It was, it was, a, it was a crank. It wasn't really a, a rear naked choke. Okay. It was a neck crank. So he was trying to separate jaw from you know separate his jaw oh yeah yeah and and was twisting so that could end up very poorly yeah you wire your jaw shut not great yeah you don't want that no um especially connor who you know is kind of a big like you lose all that mass because you cannot eat hard food oh i thought i thought you shut. meant because he's mouthy as fuck well that too but you can't eat solid food so how are you going to get the protein you need to in order to keep your mass and yeah dude in whatnot. high school my friend my friend nick he was a little chubbier he his jaw got wired shut because he he got kicked by uh he was playing goalie he was soccer and he got uh, kicked slide tackle and i think he lost like 20 30 pounds just from having his jaw wired shut yeah because you like it's like here's applesauce yep you and, know uh, you, you and know it's for lunch applesauce wow <laughs> but it worked out because then ladies found him attractive and now he's married to one of them. All right. Good for him. Yeah. Long so, story short, get your jaw wired shut. Yeah, I'm actually working on that <laughs> right now. I'm just going to... Actually, do you want to... We should fight. We should fight. We, we should, should fight. fight. I'll show you how to, how a neck crank works. Just That'll be great. punch me. <laughs> just, just, just Let's make it faster than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to feel the pain. I just want it to happen. So the next fight, I think, for Khabib, 
in six months to a year. Mm-hmm. Um, if he if the UFC keeps him, I I honestly think that it's Dana said, and that was one of the things that I know. Again, you couldn't hear, but. There was a lot of talking happening last night, and I missed some of it because the announcers obviously were talking about what was going on and keeping people abreast of the situation. But Dana was talking to Khabib, and Khabib was adamant about wanting the belt on in the ring, in right. the octagon. And Dana said, if I put this belt on you, these people will fucking riot. Mm-hmm. He goes, and they'll start throwing shit in the ring, and I don't need that. So they got him the fuck out of the ring. And and honestly, when Bruce Buffer made the call, he did not look happy either. No, that he was, looked confused. He looked confused and and a, and a a bit miffed. I've never seen Bruce Buffer like look so stoic. And he like he did his normal thing, and it sounded like normal Bruce Buffer. Yeah, but his face said no. <laughs> yeah, his face was like I'm upset at how this went. Did he did he used to fight or anything, or is he? I just don't think so. An announcer. I think he's just been around the UFC as long as it's been around, mm-hmm. and I think that that like. When you get into stuff like that, I think the the homegrown guys, I think the guys that were there from the OG days, just get a little. They get upset because it's you're tarnishing what they've worked so hard to build. Yeah, and Khabib was just kind of handed this, you know, this opportunity to to advance the sport another level, mm-hmm. and he could have gained fans last night had he been respectful about it, and all he did was hurt himself. Yeah, you know. And that, like, I look at Mighty Mouse, and that's a champion to me, even though he doesn't have a belt anymore. When he was champion, he was always respectful. He didn't get the best pay-per-view buys, but always respectful, always went for a finish, always was trying to be exciting and that guy, mm-hmm. but did everything like a class act. Right. And and Khabib, you know, had the opportunity to do that last night, and he, he failed. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens to him. Yeah. I'm, I'm I think, very interested. We'll probably have a follow-up at some point. Yes. Yeah. The, the, we'll find out what everybody what the verdict is. Yeah, because w- w- once the the press conferences started happening, I was like, I switched over to Khabib because Connor was like mouthing off, and he was showing he was just promoting his uh, his, uh, his proper whisk. twelve. Yeah, proper twelve. Proper twelve. Which I still want to try. I also want to try, it. but it, that's not what it, the the fight's about. No. And then I get I heard he was late, or he was like thirty minutes late, so Khabib just left. Yeah. And and my thing is. Yeah, you can play the psychological game, but show respect to the opponent. Yeah, it was, I think part of it was that, but I don't, it's Vegas traffic. So I also think that that could have been a part of it as well. Like Dana got to, they asked Dana about it. Uh And Dana said when he got there, literally three minutes before the thing went live, um, they were like, yeah, Connor's in a car. And he was like, okay, cool. Because the UFC does all their transportation and stuff. Connor doesn't drive himself. Right. Like he gets a fucking blacked out tr- van and him and his crew get to, you know, escort or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, they probably just hit traffic, missed an exit, something like that. But yeah, I guess it, it also could have been a, crazy. It, uh, it could have been a mind game too. You know, he was late the first time as well. So in New York and that one, I'm, I don't know if the UFC was in charge of, but, um, the next fight for Khabib, I think is Tony Ferguson, who also fought, on the card, and that was right before that was the Anthony Pettis Tony Ferguson fight, yeah. which was crazy. Yeah, that was intense. Fucking nuts. Lots so much of blood. blood. <laughs> so much. So much blood. blood. Um, Dude, he looked like a vampire. Yeah, Ferguson. It just looked like he was like extra skinny, straight gaunt. Yeah. yeah, it was. His cut has to be huge. He has to walk around at like two two ten or something because he his face was just like. I've never seen it like that before. I've never seen his face look that thin. And like you look at old fights and he doesn't look as emaciated as he looked last night. Mm -hmm. But again, that could be coming from the fact that he did have a major knee surgery six months ago. Yeah, which is extra impressive that he came back and and did so well in this. And I saw one at one point he like buckled. Yeah. And I thought his knee was going to give out. and I I thought Pettis was going to take it. Yeah, Pettis. And that's crazy that Pettis broke his hand on the punch that knocked Tony down. He oh, said is that, that the one he yeah he okay. said he said he hit him with that big right and he felt his hand shatter and he went oh shit <laughs> <laughs> and I mean I respect him for for stopping it there because I've seen guys like one of my favorite fighters of all time Uriah Faber uh, mm. broke both his hands in a fight and was basically down to elbows and went five rounds so like props to him. he lost the fight yeah but like if your hands are broken in an MMA fight are you gonna win? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, I think that's it's a tactical retreat at that point. Yeah, it's you're just saving your 
body. Yeah, which is going to be with you well past your UFC career. Yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. Very much so. But I think that that would be the next fight for me is is Tony Khabib. And have they fought before? They have not. They've been trying to get this fight that it's been scheduled like two or three times. And every time someone's gotten hurt, it's gotten canceled. Khabib doesn't made weight. Like mm-hmm. it's <laughs> it's a really interesting fight. And I, I think I told you when when Connor Khabib was announced that Khabib is the kind of fighter that I think Connor would lose to. He's a, mm-hmm. a very heavy wrestler. Connor has doesn't have the great greatest uh, takedown defense. I think Tony's the kind of guy that gives Khabib trouble. He's very yeah. high energy. He's very in your face. He's got a variation of striking ability. He's very good on the ground. There's there's a lot to be scared of with Tony Ferguson. And Lord knows if he's preparing for Khabib, like he's going to have X amount of time to do it. Mm-hmm. And he, all he's going to be doing is watching tape. Yeah. Khabib has, I mean, his stand-up yesterday was awful. Khabib's? Yeah. Not good. He's got he's got one trick in the bag, but it's a trick that nobody has been able to stop yet. Yeah. Did you see the video of him wrestling a bear? Yes. When he was like nine? Yeah. Like it's a it's a small bear. But it's but a it's bear. It's a bear. <laughs> in Russia we wrestle bears. Yeah. It's a, like, wow. Yeah, he's been doing this since he was like four. Yeah. He's he was bred for this. Like yeah. that's that's just one of those like Russian made in a lab like stories. It mm-hmm. was like he was literally made for this. Like his parents were like, "You will be champion." Yes, <laughs> you're. You wrestled bear. <laughs> bear. I don't yeah. have a good Russian accent. And, I uh, I'm surprised at how decent what I said sounded. So I'm gonna just stop. Yeah. There. Go out on a high. Yeah. <laughs> at one point I could say um, ch- uh, not prep yet, prep yet. Because do you remember Chernobyl? Yes. That movie? Yeah. That. I saw that and, and I picked up like three words <laughs> and then like time and then happened. held on to them. <laughs> yeah. And now they're gone. And it's over now. So. It's over now. But I think you're right. I think Ferguson <clears throat> is the next fight. As long as his knee's okay. Which yeah. Which I'm, I'm sure. I mean, he looked good after that buckle. Dude, I, they said he didn't do physical therapy. He did it all he himself. did it all his own. Yep. He's, he's a freak. move. He's a freak. Yeah. He is a physical freak of nature I mean, clearly it worked out and he's a little bit insane but like yeah. whatever <laughs> you have to be uh yeah to, to make fighting your career you have to be just a touch insane to, to be willing to lock yourself in the cage of another man who's trying to murder your face mm-hmm. yeah 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 that's fair i wouldn't do it you did it briefly it was it was very brief it was just to pay bills but, how many fights uh seven seven five and two five and two okay you won I'll take that. I did. I, I won a decent amount. Uh, and it was just like local shit. Just Orlando random yeah. <laughs> shit. And I I mean, I I got knocked out. Uh, I got knocked out once and choked out once. And You didn't tap? Uh I did, but it was like late. Like I it it blacked out real quick. Mm-hmm. It was like, yeah, and then I oh, woke. Yeah. yeah, it was real fast. Yeah. I was like, I can do it, I can do it, I can Nope. Okay. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, getting knocked out is super scary. Oh, I bet. It's I don't want to do scary. it. <laughs> it's, it's not great. But yeah, whatever. Um, but yes, moving on from from this. Even though I love talking about the fight game, and I hope we're gonna actually try and do. If you're if you're watching, I love the UFC. I've gotten Josh into it pretty pretty heavily in the in the year that we've lived together. Yeah. I, we're gonna try and start doing fight companions. And I think one of the things we should start doing is just trying to break down, you know, any card we watch or whatever, just sitting here for another, you know, 20, 30 minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And just like talk it because I think there's an FS1 card in two weeks or something that looks decent and just. Yeah, we can start watching Bellator and shit too. familiarize yourself with stuff and like familiarize ourselves with other fighters and whatnot. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Bellator has some decent has some decent talent as well. Yeah. Roy McDonald is. Oh, he's so good. I don't know any names. Roy McDonald used to fight in the UFC, and his last fight in the UFC was against Robbie Lawler, and that was one of the best fights I've ever seen. Really? Roy was winning, uh, and Robbie was the champ, and he needed to stop Roy. He needed to, to knock him out, mm-hmm. and he shattered his nose. Literally, like, the last punch, you saw Rory's nose basically go flat into his face. Uh And then he fell to the ground in just immense amounts of pain. Like, because Robbie just straight jabbed all day. Yeah. It was, it was, it was like, he took a page. Roy McDonald's Canadian, so he trained a lot with GSP and and Faris Zahabi. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
GSP's got that that jab. He's got a very nice like you go back and watch vintage GSP. He's got a clean, crisp pop jab. And I will never forget one of the first GSP fights. It was one of the first, but one of my favorite GSP fights tactically was he fought Josh Koscheck. Okay. And Koscheck was just a big power guy and he was a good wrestler. GSP stayed to the outside and just jabbed the whole fucking fight. Mm-hmm. Koscheck's uh, he broke his orbital bone and his eye was basically like swollen over by the end of the fight. Could not see out of it. Gross. And it was just tactically, it was great. And Robbie Lawler took a page out of the GSP book and just kept jabbing his nose. Just mm-hmm. kept. And it, it fucking won him the fight. It won him the, like, would not have won otherwise. Mm-hmm. Rory was winning on the cards. So it was awesome. And that was, was a great in, fight. That, that was in, in the UFC. Oh, yeah. He UFC. was in the UFC. Okay. Yeah. And then Rory went to Bellator after that. He took a year off because his nose was fucked up. <laughs> and he was trying to get it fixed. And apparently he just got his ass kicked by, oh, uh, man. They were talking about it on the Shab Rogan podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, but some guy fucked up his nose. and Again? Yeah, again. And uh, Rory's supposed to fight in Bellator's 170 pound, like King of the Cage thing as their welterweight champion. Yeah, and he got fucked up. So they're like, right. "Oh shit, what are we gonna do? <laughs> what do we do now? Our champion isn't available." Yeah. Hmm. So no, I'm down. I'm super down. But they, yeah, that's something we're gonna try and do, guys. So if if you like stuff like this, or if we're super wrong about something, feel free to comment and uh, at me on Twitter because uh, I'm not scared of your bitch ass. Wow. Wrecked. Uh, Fight. Junk drawer Pat. Dope. Uh, one last quick shout out to the Karate Hottie. Ooh. She won. And I love her. You do love her. She's a lovely lady. She's quite attractive. Yeah. She has children. She does. She does. So that's cool. She's great. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I, I know I told you Tyler sent some text to me. Yeah. Let me look for it. So for those of you that don't know us personally and you're watching this, Josh is not a sports person. The most sports I've gotten him into, again, is is MMA. That's something that you've taken a liking to because I, I think it's more cerebral than more than most sports. It's cerebral and I like the personality. Yeah. Like it, it's the same way with like stand-up comedy. You don't like dislike sports. It's just not your thing. I just don't. I yeah. played when I was a kid. I just yeah, don't, it's just not. Just you'd rather care. do something than watch it happen. Yeah. So he got a text from a friend and he was like, I don't know if this is joking or not, but sports stuff. I'm going to rate it to you when we do this. So this is the first time I'm hearing this. So I don't know what it I is. I hope this isn't anticlimactic. Here's the text. Hey, Josh, I have some trivia for your roommate. This is the first week in college football history that all Power Six conferences are represented in the top ten. Can you tell him that and let me know what he says? Um, is that a joke? Is that just information? Uh, I would assume that that's just information, mm. which is cool i guess i think he's just like he knows you know sports yeah he and and he likes to jab at me about ucf a little bit yeah and that's that's why i wasn't sure because last time he was over you guys were like joke arguing yeah no we had arguing we had like a good it was a good discussion i i mean i like talking to people that know more stuff about me than like sports because most of the time the sports i know shit about nobody cares yeah i'm like oh you want to talk hockey and they're like what I, uh, we don't do that here. We're not Canada. <laughs> so, and I know I know enough about football that like I love football, but I I like eh, it's not my favorite. And you don't have a college team. No, either, I don't. Because you did full sale and full sale. I did. Do Does full not sale. have a college team. They have nothing. No, I um, bet I would not be surprised if they got an esports team though. They should do that. That would make sense. Mm-hmm. That would make the most sense. Yeah, you should sponsor an esports team and then have like a my like a filler flyer league or whatever it would just make sense but mm-hmm. regardless um yeah that'll be a that'll be a podcast for another time i think we should have a couple i i wouldn't mind having mike and craig come on and talk about ufc and their championshipness because both of them as well as you are you ucf ucf uh alums yeah you said ufc oh, i just wanted I? to make sure we were talking Sorry. about football now. dyslexia Yuck. um uh yeah have their UCF alums as well as you. Mm-hmm. And I would like to have that, that champion debate because I don't, I don't buy it, but is it, uh, is this junk or drunk drawer? Like Ooh, football edition. We could do that. Cause I would be down for that. Cause I don't know what to say. <laughs> Josh is sitting, sitting there here. drinking. <laughs> Just like the tailgates. <laughs> Your head's big. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, I'd be super about that. Yeah, dude, that'd be fun. But, um, so on to something that you can talk about now because I feel like I've like real quick. 
I've we tongue punched this whole. This you want to keep it as one? We're yeah. at thirty six minutes, so yeah. It was just, okay. I mean, I don't I don't know how much you want to talk about it, but you've Not too much, recently actually. gotten God of War on yeah. your hands on it, dude. It's so fucking it's good. So good. I I mean, I borrowed it from you, and we yeah. have the Spider Man, and then yeah. God yeah, of War. Kratos one, I'm just going to put that Oh yeah. right there. Actually, this might be a good place to start putting it for, for podcasts. Yeah. We could decorate the table and shit. Yeah, we're going to do some moving, hopefully, next weekend of where everything is. So Do more set designs, set yeah. dressing and stuff. But dude, this game is so fucking good. It's so good. Like, it started out, because I loved the original God of War. That was one of the first games that I stayed up when I was in middle school or high school, whenever it came out, and just didn't sleep. Yeah. And it's making me do that again. Like it's so much fun. The the having the axe and the the recall. Oh yeah. Like, oh power. It's, it's my favorite thing in in any game ever. Yeah. I think is is throwing the axe, hitting something with it, calling it back, and then it deteriorating into nothingness. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm basically all powerful. <laughs> I'm a god now. <laughs> and uh, I just spoiler alert. Two. Three, okay. Uh, I just got the. The rage, whatever oh, yeah. swords, the mm-hmm. those things, so much chaos fun. blades. Yeah, like up until this point, I know I mentioned it to you. I said, I don't know, I think I like the axe more, but it's like I remember. That's a good time. <laughs> I know what you really want. <laughs> but I, I, I love Norse mythology and that whole world, oh, and so I'm, great. I'm so excited. I hope they do start going into like Egyptian mythology. Yeah, that's what the that the showrunner said is that they were they were gonna start just having him murder all of the gods that have ever gotted. Mm -hmm. So I think that that would be super cool. I think like an Anubis Kratos fight would be dope. Yeah. That would be fucking awesome. The God of death versus Mm -hmm. Kratos, who is the bringer of death to everything. Yeah. Did, uh, (laughs) so did they say if they're going to do a couple in Norse mythology, I haven't played far enough to know what happens. I don't remember. And you're now ahead of me from where I was because I got busy with stuff. Mm -hmm. And then Spider-Man came out recently, and that's what I've been focusing on. Yeah. but Which also, great game. Yes. Super. Oh, God, it's so good. But um, I think they said there's a plan for like five more games. So I would assume there's got to be like at least – there's not five – like so Egyptian gods, there's multiple Hindu gods – you're oh, that's probably right. not going to fight Buddha, so you can probably no. can't call out Buddhism and Christianity. Uh, Scientology? I, I don't. Is there? I feel. Uh, I feel like there has to be multiple, like, like at least two, in each. Like Greek mythology obviously took three fucking games because there's a god for everything. There's a god for everything, and I don't think they expected it to always go on forever. Yeah, it was. It was okay. Wow, we get to make a third one. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, I would say at least two in each mythology. I, so that, there's that a lot would, of Egyptian gods, too, isn't there? I think so. Yeah, so maybe, maybe like, yeah, maybe maybe they just go Egyptian after, like, they'll do another Norse and then do three Egyptian or something like that. Where, I, I would get, if they do two, it'd be two, two, two. If they do three, it'll be three and three. Yeah. But so but games. again, I don't know what happens in the story yet to know if it's, yeah. if it's possible. Other than... Having the chaos play its back, which yeah. is fucking awesome. It's so much That's fun. so emotional. Yeah. That is still, that is like, that was like legit like tears. I was like, oh my God. And that's, that's one of the things I love about the game is you really don't, aside from the, the killing, but getting to the killing parts, you don't do much. You yeah. like lift things, you break things and you move things. But the way that they slow everything down, you feel like how hard it is to do and how, how much like passion is behind it for yeah. them. But it, it slows it down for you, so you have to feel it. Like the whole boat ride back to to uh, your home to get the blades. Oh, God. Oh, you're just sitting there. Athena shows up. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so good. It's It really is. Like, that, that game is phenomenal. It's probably going to win game of the year. I think it's deserved. I hope um, so. Like, I'll probably buy my own copy just because, just to keep yeah yeah no it's it's awesome and and his and atreus's relationship is fucking awesome and it's phenomenal and it like advances and shit yeah i love also the storytelling mechanic of having all these slow parts be just like passive so, like uh, atreus's comments when you're fighting yeah or when you're in the boat and, and he's asking about his lore. mom and shit yeah, but it, it'll give you like background lore too, so that you feel like you're getting story in a very natural way, which is something that the 
the first three games were less good at. Yeah. They were still good at it, but it was like PlayStation 2. Yeah, it was like, oh, look at all the blood, and it's like, cool, all right, this is what this is about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like Mortal Kombat, only not. Yeah. It honestly, um, to tag something else we've done, uh, Dirt. It reminded me a bit of Dirt yeah. and Rufio, of how I think it just how you picture it and how that's definitely Justin like pictures it it's definitely something i've tried to emulate a little bit moving forward mm-hmm. and like especially is softening as time goes on if you guys don't know in our D campaign uh we're basically that i'm i'm that guy but not really um well you know and i'm kind of him you are kind of him except not anymore well we'll see we'll, we'll see. see anything yeah. can happen anything can happen you're right who knows who knows yeah actually i don't know where this will release in the continuity uh it won't we won't be there quite yet but yeah i think i just edited 28 and 29 yeah i think 26 20 20, did 26 just release on thursday i think so okay um maybe 25 so just to be able to get another tag in there spider-man yeah awesome love the swing mechanic what do you think of the white the white spider um like the, the new suit fine to me it like what is the white supposed to be so it's just a different it's just like in in like it's just like the, a, a style yeah in the on the old itineration it was a black spider and for this one they oh, changed it to right. white and like made it real big and shit and people yeah. like some people were like that's so cool other people are like this is stupid and i hate it mm-hmm. i like it i think yeah. it's clean i think it looks good like i'm a fan i think you have to modernize costumes yeah otherwise it just it looks shitty we're not in the fucking 60s anymore get it let's come on yeah no i like the white i feel like even where they put the white it ha- it looks like it has some purpose. Like it's a uh, it's guards for his his knuckles. Yeah, he's punching. It's like a brace, so he gets more power. I mean, I'm talking out my ass. Yeah, but it but looks that way. It yeah. looks like it has a purpose. It's on the back. It's just uh, yeah, it's just the spider. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I have only played uh, the part where you download the game. <laughs> got so it. I and then I mean, you got to my... swing. Yeah, you got yeah. to you got to swing and climb shit. Yeah, that's all I did. Yeah, but what's really cool too is you were like, "I'm gonna go to this part of New York," and you went there, and it was everything that you knew was there. Yeah, which I think is super cool too. That they took they literally took a map of New York and were like, "Okay, here it is." Yep, they made a couple things different, like a little bit bigger. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah. it's a video game. Uh, <laughs> stupid. Um, yeah, I'm 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 getting pretty far and I I stayed up a little later than I wanted to. I had a date and uh I stayed up till like three thirty playing and I was like, Oh shit, I have to be up in like six hours. Oh, did you even get up? I did. Yeah, on time? I okay. did, but we everything got pushed back from her end of the spectrum. So I was like, cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember waking up. And, and thinking, I think it was like 12. Yeah. And I heard you out there. I'm like, why? You said 11. <laughs> that, this is not, this is after 11. <laughs> this is wrong. You did this wrong. You're, you're you, a liar. You fucked up. Uh, no, everything got pushed back. She pushed it back. But um, it, all, it all worked out. I was like, cool. I get to like sleep for another hour. This yeah. is good. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I feel like that's a good like nerding out. We talked about stuff that we know and, and whatnot. And I think we're going to do... We should probably do like a let's play for one of these games at some point. And we just, should. I have the Elgato. Yeah, just so we like can. wherever one of us is at in the game, just jump in and be like, "Hey, so this is what's happened. Let's do it," mm-hmm. and just do a fucking fun little little let's little play. Let's play. Yeah, yeah, I think. Or we could start at the beginning with your Spider Man because you're gonna you haven't done Spider Man yet. So. That's a good point. Yeah, we could do that. I think I'll bring the big PC over here, mm-hmm. and then I know I, I mentioned I want to set that up as like the game area game lounge area and that and that'll be enough that we can run it off your laptop or my laptop oh for sure because we only need the pc for like D &D. but so well i uh yeah i think that's that's where we're gonna wrap it up guys thanks for checking everything out we uh we love your faces josh is gonna tell you other stuff that i don't normally tell you like comment subscribe uh share hugs share it with your hugs. friends give us hugs give us hugs um let me know if the fidget spinner helps i'm about to order a multi-pack so we can see what kind of fidget spinner works best for me <laughs> um what else is there is there uh, a buzzfeed quiz for that it sounds like there should be uh, we can make one what fidget spinner works best for you dab <laughs> uh so we're on instagram the junk drawer show we're on youtube we have uh any podcast thing stitcher I know that's one. Anchor? Anchor. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Anchor's if you want to go new. to Anchor, um, if you haven't heard about it, it's pretty cool. 
they're free, which I love. And we're going to start doing more like exclusive stuff there. Mm-hmm. Um, so download Anchor and follow us. We're also on Spotify, so follow us we're there as well. We're on Spotify now, too. And, uh, and don't want to make this too long of an outro, so see you later. Kisses. <laughs>